Yeah, 20 to 10, and still nothing. What they don't tell you is that when I go and collect it, when it's ready, it's 225 euros. <laughs> That's why we started this channel, to tell you people yeah, the real truth around uh, post-Brexit, um, moving to the EU. But before any of that, roll intro. Afternoon, chickens. Hiding in the bush. Yeah, it's nice and cool under there. Proper hot one today, isn't it? Good afternoon. Saturday afternoon. From the southwest of France, Departement says, La Chironte. <sighs> Had a great day yesterday. All over the place. Socialising with different people. It's lovely. Yeah, sorry the video couldn't go out on Friday, like normal. But uh, yeah, I was too busy. But uh, so today, We've uh, already been to Conflon and we've bought some stuff um, for the hose. We already had a hose from the UK, which was a hose lock one. Unfortunately, all well, the fittings are universally here in France too. So we've uh, managed to uh, get some stuff for a sprinkler system. I'll show you. Lisa's been uh, picking tomatoes and uh, raspberries and uh, courgettes so she's in the process now of um, making the soup out of the massive massive courgettes and uh, and then frying off the courgettes um, so she can freeze them for the winter. So you'll have seen from um, Friday's video, um, which went out Saturday, same day as I'm recording this, which is why it's probably not making any sense to you, is that um, at the end of the video, he said next time, I showed you a picture of a couple of cats. Yeah, so to put that into context, if you can just picture me in the office, editing, minding my own business, Lisa comes in with her phone on a website called Le Bon Coin. Um, you pronounce it in English, Le Bon Coin. Uh, well, it's a bit like a French eBay, like a Facebook marketplace type of thing. And Lisa said, do you want a cat for free? I immediately said yes, because I'm thinking of the rats, you see. And uh, that brief conversation turned into a, uh, right, we're getting two cats. So, uh, we've been out, we've named them Dutch and Dylan, after Predator, the film. Dutch being um, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character, and Dylan being uh, Carl Weathers' character. One of our favourite films. Anyway, they're not here yet, I need to mow this lawn. Um, so, I'm not going to film the lawn again. So... Whatever's next, let's do that. To carry them, come. Look, another baby one. Wow. Two 
Is that one Dutch? Ow! I'm going to What do you think, Robbie? Good. Oh, he's holding on to you. Oh. Loves you. <laughs> Yes, there we have it. Dutch and Dylan. Eight weeks old, we think. A bit small. But uh, yeah, Jean Luc's not uh, eating them. He is very interested in them, but uh, he's not being an idiot, which is good. And so they're just enjoying themselves. I'll see you tomorrow. It's very cool and moderate 37 degrees Celsius today. <laughs> it's proper warm. It's like being on holiday. But it's real life. Yes, yeah, so Lisa and I were talking about um, what we like to do on holiday. And, uh, and our favourite drink on the holidays, pina colada. So we thought, let's have a pina colada. Then we realised that we didn't have uh, the ingredients. And it's Sunday, which means all the shops are shut. But allegedly, according to the internet, there's an intermarche in a, an A. It's about 38 minutes away. I'm going to take my bike. I'm going to go and have a look. Um, so yeah, hey, and the cats are doing well. Um, you're one of them. Can you even get out the cat flap? There's a cat flap um, that was already in the house, in the, the door that goes from the kitchen in, into the utility room. So uh, yeah, and Jean-Luc's uh, behaving himself too. Yeah, so no GoPro for the helmet. Uh, but I'm going to turn it back. Let's do that. So, it was open, the Intent Marche in, in an A, it's about an A as in an A and A, you know, the, uh, the perfume from the 80s or 90s. Anyway, it was the depot. So, didn't get any ingredients for Pina Colada, it's really annoying. But boy, it was a bike ride hot, it wasn't enjoyable at all, it's the hottest I've ever been on a bike. Now normally, when uh, it's hot, you go on a bike, you go off, and the breeze cools you down. Let's just warm me up. It was, it was ridiculously hot. Took all the enjoyment out of it. It's the first time I've not enjoyed a ride. I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Right one today. Lisa just had a uh, severe weather warning come up on her phone about oh, the hot weather. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> yeah, the Met Office, eh? Anyway, so today um, we've got a phone call with the CPAM office. Um, if you remember, we went there last week and uh, they couldn't find uh, a record of Lisa's application to get into the French healthcare system. So uh, we've got Emma to act as a translator so she's going to be phoning in on Lisa's phone and CPAM are going to be phoning on my phone. Let's see how that works out. <laughs> yeah so we've had quite a few comments thank you about uh, saying that uh, that we are getting well on our way in terms of the visas and stuff. Right we're not, we're not. I am um, but Lisa can't apply for a carte de séjour although she has just to get herself on the system um, until she's part of the French healthcare system now we sent off uh, all the applications for me, Lisa and the kids, all in, all in one envelope. So, I don't know why um, they can't find Lisa's. And I don't know why, for all the correspondence back and, back and forth between us and the CPAM office, I've always been sending stuff back to do with Lisa. Now, if they didn't have the application, you, you would have thought they would have said, right, why do you keep sending this stuff for somebody else? Anyway. So, it's nearly 25 past nine. So, let's go make the phone call.
yeah, 20 to 10, and still nothing. Um, although I've just um, had a notification on the phone saying that uh, my application for the card de séjour has been accepted. Um, so I'm now here until the 2nd of September 2025. Uh, what they don't tell you is that when I go and collect it, when it's ready, it's 225 euros. Nobody tells you that stuff. That's almost 500 euros, just your you, Felice and I, to get our carte de séjour. Right, and that's why we, that's why we started this channel, to tell you people, you have the real truth around uh, post-Brexit, um, moving to the EU. So it's cost us a, a fortune, I would say it cost us 500 pound to get the, um, the appointment for the visa, and then once we went to the appointment, it cost us like another £200 each um, to apply for the visa. So a couple of hundred quid each to get the appointment. And then a couple of hundred quid each for the, uh, for the actual visa. And then when you get here, you need to validate the, the visa. And that came at a cost of €200 Euros each. And now, carte de séjour is another €225. Euros. But so, uh, that doesn't even make what? we would have had to have paid for Angel in nursery. So it's still oh, yeah. a cheaper way of living. <laughs> <laughs> but no, she's free. Anyway, you still went on the phone call. Yep, yeah, still nothing, 10 to. Right, it's five two, and we've only got Emma till 10 on the phone. So uh, I think if nothing happens at uh, 10, we're gonna have to rethink our tactics, which is probably gonna be uh, popping down to the the CPOM office again tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, we'll have to do that. Right, so we've managed, that's the Royal Way. So Lisa's managed to find uh, an English speaking CPAM helpline. So we spoke to them. Um, yeah, they accessed uh, the records and um, can't find any evidence of Lisa applying for a social security number. That's really annoying. So she's going to make some uh, more inquiries um, and she's going to email. Uh, interestingly enough though, she saw on the records that we had a telephone appointment at 9.30 this morning. Uh, that obviously didn't happen. So uh, yeah, we can't use the gas cooker uh, or the gas hob because um, well, it's just not working. So uh, I think I need a new regulator. So I'm going to go and buy one of them. See if we can fix it. Layers.